Well, it's the opening ceremony of the uh, African nation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Confined to within our studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a tenth as long. It's profile time. Of course. Ooh. It's that time of the night. It is that time of the night. Um, Roberto Carlos. Oh, what's his, full, what's his full name? Roberto Carlos da Silva Rocha. Oh, good. Um, uh, yeah, the, the big-thighed man is yeah. coming in. <laughs> but first, I must tell you a few things. He was born on April 10th, 1973. Six years. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Part of the summer of love for new listeners. <laughs> um, Roberto Carlos. Would you call him a living legend? Would you go as far as say legend? He's on the old Pelé best 125 living Must football. Must be then. Yeah. <laughs> Must be. I would. Um, <laughs> uh, a fantastic... Still gets a giggle. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think he's... I think, well, he's a living legend. You know why? Because he's about to become a Dean Windows Hall of Fame entrant. That's why. Mm. Right answer. Mm. Uh, you get the points. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Roberto Carlos uh, began his uh, professional career playing for Uniao Sao Paulo UAL. A bit of a tricky one, um, yeah. but uh, they're based in Sao Paulo. Uh, not one of the bigger teams... As no. I'm sure we haven't heard of them. Need to sort their name out. They do. <laughs> well, don't judge them. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it's, it's important. Brand awareness. <laughs> but <Right>, Kenyan. <laughs> <laughs> Kenyan would know, would he? But if I may. Uh, but even though he was playing for one of the smaller sides, he still got um, a Brazilian national team call-up. Oh, yeah. So uh, he was in there from, from quite a young age. He moved then um, to Palmeiras and... That's when he really started to get uh, recognised. Palmeiras were a decent side, they definitely were then as well. That's right, and he won uh, two consecutive uh, league titles with them. Sorry, he was at Athletic uh, Mineiro for, for a very brief time uh, in between there. He had a good time playing in the uh, Brazilian leagues, and he was there for sort of, around about five years. Mm. So, you know, he earned his stripes, if you like, and, mm. he, and he got himself a move uh, to Inter. Mm. I think that's when we all kind of... Mm. Were switched on to this guy. What year did he move to Inter, Marcus? I'm interested. He went to Inter in '95. Uh, yeah, I forgot he was even there. <laughs> yeah, Hodgson was in town. Yeah, he was there. Paul Ince was of course playing. Mm. Yeah, um, and he and he put in some good performances for Inter. He became, as I say, quite the player yeah. that we all kind of know now. You I know? think it was more common for Brazilians to to at least play a little bit more in their home country. I mean, because he would have been about 22 when he moved to Inter. When I mean, you see him moving earlier and earlier these days, mm. which is no good for Brazil and it's no good for their development, I don't think either. That's right. So he's obviously he's learned a lot a lot about the game and at least sort of fully grown into an adult by the time he's moved over to Europe, which I think is important. Mm. Um, the, but he was only at Inter for really a season, mm. and then he was off straight to, to Real, Real Madrid, where Madrid. he was at for uh, eleven years. I mean, that's how we know him best, of yeah. course. I mean, that is an incredible achievement to stay at that club for that amount of time. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. Uh, he um, he was there for eleven seasons, and he played a total of five hundred and eighty-four matches, scoring seventy-one goals. Good, <laughs> you know, for a for a defender. Although, is he a wing back or is he a, is he a left back? He could be a striker the way he plays. <laughs> if you talk to scholars of the South American game, especially in Brazil, they'll say that the, the traditional fullback role doesn't even exist in Brazil. That's right. So it's very difficult to call him a left back. You know, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's obviously a very forward-minded player. And, and can we can we just say bags of pace? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely pacey. Yeah. Uh, in 97, he was voted second best player in the world behind Ronaldo, mm. uh, who he played with at uh, Real Madrid, of course. Two remember. of them were Galacticos, one could say. Can mm. you not remember? It was um, it was quite fashionable at one stage by some people. I, d I don't necessarily agree with this, but to say that, oh yeah, he's good going forward, but he's rubbish at the back. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really yeah. wasn't. No, he really I can no, remember him, right. Correct me if I'm wrong, you boys, but did he not play for Real Madrid against Manchester United? Manchester United. United. And when Beckham was uh, in That's his right. pomp, and he kept him quiet, yeah. and they knocked him out, didn't that they? Was, that was when everybody, a lot of people who were saying that kind of stuff thought, Actually, yeah, he's pretty good at he's, he's, well. of course, I, I think he's. I mean, he's obviously not a traditional defender, but I just, it's one of those. Any things defenders, he's... any fullback that scores goals, always gets that. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. it's good going. Danny forward, Alves but... gets it now. Yeah, right? yeah, it's a similar thing. Well, Danny I'm... Alves just like we said when we saw him for Barca, mm. basically has the entire side of the pitch to himself. Yeah, well, and bosses Carlos. it. Yeah, but Carlos was kind of like that because McManaman used to play in front of him for mm. a bit, but McManaman used to kind of drift all over the place, especially yeah. inside, and he wasn't yeah. left-footed, so he would tend to maybe uh, drift. Cut Inside, as I say. So Carlos used to just don't worry, pal. I'm Mar <laughs> maraud. Well, I'm marauding. Yeah, <laughs> Do what you want because I am marauding. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why McManaman. When he, people said, "Ah, 
play. He never quite did it for England. Yeah. Maybe because for England he had, you know, Michael Gray or Phil <laughs> Neville or something. <laughs> <Michael Gray. laughs> you know, um, who, fair enough, they got their England caps, but he's sort of thinking, Carlos... Uh, Carlos you know. is like saying to McManaman, and Stevie Mac, do what you want, mate. El yeah. Macca, do what you want, because I am raping and pillaging down this flag. <laughs> <laughs> and you're either with me or you're against me, pal. <laughs> and he's not going to be against him, Jimmy, no. with the same jersey on anyway. Yeah. Uh, but we have to talk about that uh, free kick he scored against France in Le Tournoi. Yeah. Are we going into his international career already? Well, Unprecedented. We're, we're, just, we're just mixing it up. Yeah, fair enough. That mm -hmm. was a great hit. Thanks. Mm. The, 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 oh, best, the most overwhelming, um, memorable image of that goal was the ball boy who yes. flinches. Yeah, yeah. About yeah. 20 <laughs> yards away from him. You know, I mean, there's been a lot said about that goal, but it was a magnificent hit. That yeah. was a weird tournament to start with. It, England it, won it. it, it, it just, that's why it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, that just, but that just gave it something that sort of something that was memorable. Mm, but it was such yeah. a mental tournament. Where did this come from? Yeah, it was and, England, and, Brazil, and where has it gone? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Well, that's it. We won it, and was everyone it? was like, "No, we can't have that." It's a little, <laughs> that'll be the holders next time. It was a little warm up for the World Cup, wasn't it? Uh, Ninety eight World Cup. Yeah, yeah it was, and that's yeah. why England didn't win the World Cup because they'd already won the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they won exactly. the big one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless it's win like winning Queens is better than winning Wimbledon. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to win the winding down tournament after this. <laughs> you know. But no, that was a great hit from Roberta Carlos. They also, I, I think I'm right in saying it may not have been specifically that tournament, but around that time for Brazil, I remember smashing a free kick from a long way out and it hit the crossbar yeah. and it flew out again. And when it came back in again, the crossbar was still moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still, yeah, You could see that like, rain coming off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he, um, uh, for that free kick, they asked him, you know, oh, people were analysing it, going, well, it's because he's hit this side of the ball and it's because yeah. he's done that. And hit they the asked valve him, or something. Yeah, yeah, and they asked him and he went, I don't know how I've done this. And <laughs> he really did. He just, just admitted it. it. He had a very distinctive run-up, didn't yeah. he? Yes. A long yeah. run-up. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, have you got the stats on the size of his thighs? They were absolutely oh, put, incredible. Put, put both of his thighs like. together. Yeah. 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 And then times that by five, yeah. and that's about the size of yeah. one of Now, take away the number you first thought of. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's left... favourite vegetable. The report I read at the time, I'm not sure it's still the case, so I wouldn't want to cast aspersions on this, on this dwindling thighs. I'm sure they're still very muscly, mm. um, even at the ripe old age of 37 or whatever he is. Um, he, his left thigh was 32 inches. That was the report I read. I think so, yes. Yeah, which is, you know, bigger than my waist. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. Um, didn't, yeah. didn't that all start from like some Panini, um, Panini sticker album? Like, the, like the back is like, facts about the players, and right. wasn't it a bit of a misnomer that he was, was actually that big? Well, it, how, we, how could it be thirty-two inches? That's yeah. mental. He's, yeah. he's smaller than I'm me. I'm just putting it out there. Don't shoot the messenger. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It's bigger than your whole body, Pete. What, his, his left, yeah, le left yeah. leg. You could fit your entire body in his into, his le into his thigh. I could sort of sleep in it like a sleeping bag. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it would be more like a hammock, wouldn't it? it <laughs> Um, I'm going to move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, he was... Uh, well, actually, hang on. I said I have another question. I'm going to be unconventional. Hmm. Favourite Roberto Carlos goal? Yeah. Well, he's, mm. he's hit an amazing one from the corner flag. Yes! Yeah, Madrid. Right. Glad you said that. Yeah. When he was running down the wing for, uh, all over the place. for Real Madrid and he smashed it right across. That was an unbelievable goal. I don't know how it went in. Yeah. It was um, ridiculous. Good, good call. I'm going to go for uh, a free kick he scored for Brazil against Argentina. Now, I think Brazil lost 3-1. They were 3-0 down at the time, and I think it was in Argentina. And it was about sort of 30 yards out. And it was angled. He hit it a a across the wall into the goalkeeper's side. Yeah. Top corner. But he hit it so fast, the keeper was just nowhere near it. Any number of free kicks, though, for, from Roberto Carlos. It's worth remembering that he was taking the free kicks in the side of Zidane, Figo, Beckham and Ronaldo in. It's just, <laughs> it's, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, people said his free kick record wasn't that good overall. I mean, yeah, he, he I did take quite a few, but I mean, he scored a few memorable ones as he well. Did, like, yeah. like Jim said, he must have been reasonably highly rated if he was sort of taking them mm. ahead of some other very, very talented footballers. Um, he played at World Cup 98 and was a runner-up uh, mm. with Brazil, of course. But in 2002, they won the tournament mm. and beating Germany 2-0 in the final. He... Um, I mean, Brazil were, well, they were the best team in that tournament, and, and he was a massive mm. part of that. And, I mean, he played well against England, if I remember rightly, as well. Mm. But he was, and, and for Real Madrid in Europe, he was just one of those players that would, you'd just see him in the Champions League, whether he'd be creating something. Oh, he created the golf of Zidane, because yeah, it was yeah. the cross. Yeah. Um, just putting in solid performances all the time. Well, he and Raul had a routine, didn't they? Where it was just a very, very simple, he would do a long throw, Raul would run onto it and score. Just the most, sim <laughs> the most simple thing you could think of. And they did that so many times. They just had it worked out between yeah. themselves so well. It's worth pointing out that, you know, how... Uh, Roberto Carlos was a special footballer, but if he... if 
he was playing for a nation that didn't have the attitude of, oh, we're going to play him because he's brilliant. Yeah. You know, what, if he was English, for example, would he play? Because unless you're playing that formation, England would be very sort of reluctant to play someone who's not a, a sort of traditional left back. Yeah. Or when they, be, they wouldn't want to play him at midfield, in left midfield, or whatever. Because he's a wing back, really, isn't he? Mm. I, re- I really mm. think it is the case that he just wouldn't be English. You, you, wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, well, you, wouldn't, get a, him, you yeah. wouldn't have a player. He like wouldn't that exist. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. Um, in uh, 2006, he set a club record for Real Madrid for most league matches played by a non Spanish born player. Uh, he made his 330th appearance, which broke. The uh, previous record held by Alfredo yeah, De, De Stefano. Stefano. I thought you were it's not say. bad company, is it? Yeah, yeah. I see. Um, in uh, the World Cup 2006, uh, Brazil were of course eliminated by France in the quarter final. In by Brazilian standards, that's a poor, effort. slightly weaker sort of yeah. Brazil side. Yeah. I didn't realise this, but he was blamed heavily by the fans and local media for Brazil's um, elimination because he failed to mark Thierry Henry when he scored the only goal of the game. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was incredible, really. The fact of the matter is they had one shot on goal the whole game, and <laughs> yeah. Zidane bossed them. Yeah. Another, another interesting fact about that goal is that's the only time Henri and Zidane ever linked up to score. Really? Yeah. Good fact. And Henri's the t- all-time leading scorer, and obviously Zidane's yeah. a huge icon. It's funny how certain yeah. players get blamed for certain things, but others don't at all, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Sometimes they think stick. You know, Ginola got yeah. pillory, didn't he, for France? Like losing the ball and then... Yeah. 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 Letizia yeah. for England. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do remember... Uh, Entirely justified in that case. <laughs> 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 well, I do remember against Denmark in 98 when Brazil beat them 3-2. They were 2-1 up, and Carlos tried like an overhead kick to clear it. Completely fluffed it, and Brian Laudrup controlled it and smashed it in the yeah. <laughs> Not one of his better moments. No. Unfortunately, Rivaldo got them out of jail yeah. there. But um, but he said about that. He said I was sad because there uh, are more than twenty players in a team in, mm. in, in in the squad, and I was the one taking the blame for what happened. He said that bothered me. I'm respected in Europe, but I wanted to be respected in my own country. It's all a bit silly, isn't it? Quite really? sad, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, in 2007, he uh, announced that he was not going to renew his contract with Real Madrid when he moved to Turkish side Fenerbahce. Well, I thought he was going to go back to Brazil then, but I think as we were talking about off mic slightly earlier that he had a few, bit, a few money problems and those sort of Turkish clubs do pay really well so right, right. he probably earned more there than he would have done going back to Brazil straight away I mean he did he did pretty well for Fenerbahce they, they, uh, in the 2007-2008 Champions League they reached the quarterfinals you know mm. which is which is great going and they, they knocked Sevilla out on the way and they were edged out by Chelsea 3-2 uh, yeah. and eight. I remember that yeah but he did win the uh, Turkish Super Cup uh, a couple of times uh, with Fernabache, so he had a bit of a success there. And uh, he was loved by the fans. They were they were singing "I Love You, Carlos" and giving him a standing ovation uh, when he left there. And on December the fifteenth, two thousand and nine. He was going back to Brazil to play for Corinthians to link up with Ronaldo. Yeah, I think and Edu, of course. It's a mouthwatering uh, prospect. It's a mouthwatering yeah. prospect. I had no idea that Edu was there. Oh yeah, well they're they're really um, they're really going for it. It's their centenary uh, year. It's their isn't it? centenary yeah. year, and they take that really really seriously. Mm. It's massive business. The yeah. centenary every hundred and, years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Can't it's come it, along every day, does it? Well, <laughs> but like in England, it's not that big a deal. But in Brazil, it's absolutely huge stuff, and they've never won the Copa Libertadores. Mm. And they're, they're they're one of the few, in fact, I think they're the only big club in Brazil that's never won it. So they're really, really absolutely, you know, centenary year. Getting up they're for buying it, yeah. a, you know, they've got some big names in. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's uh, he said, I'm anxious to get to Corinthians, pull the shirt onto my body, hear the crowd, and to make history alongside Ronaldo. Yeah. Um, so uh, and also apparently was uh, he's going to be given the number six jersey. Oh, okay, right. That's where he used to work for Brazil, isn't it? Mm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was it. that was his number. And he hasn't given up hope of playing at the 2010 World Cup. Most of my pick him, Adriano, Ronaldo, <laughs> Ronaldinho, <laughs> Rivaldo, Roger Miller, and then Roger Miller comes out of retirement, <laughs> yeah. Stoichkov, uh, just an old boys World yeah, Cup would be yeah. class. I think we'd all like to see that in fairness. That would be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. They should have like one running con- currently, yeah. sort of the Masters World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. But that'd not with great. an indoor Flats. blue pitch. Uh, no. <laughs> England right. could have like Steve Hodge, Gary Stevens. <laughs> yeah. It'd be super. It'd be super. Um, he's 36 uh, now, and he's hoping to play at the World Cup. But, uh, but uh, that, the left back spot's actually the only yeah. position that, that they don't really know what they're doing there. And he's got yeah. apparently he's got a good relationship with Dunga. Oh, he so, wouldn't. Um, they know each other very well. Yeah, so, yeah, so if they get you on, never you never know. know. Chaps, you never if it was Maradona, he'd be picking him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can all believe that. Well, he said that um, he said the World Cup is the most important competition in the world, and uh, taking part was the most important thing that happened in my life. And he said uh, when he won the World Cup, he said at that moment memories of my family, friends, and my country came flooding into my head. Um, 
there was memories of 1973, the place I was born, my friends, the tough times. I didn't give a moment's thought to the fact that I'd played for, for all these different clubs. I just remembered where I came from and how I'd worked my way up. Uh, fr from the Brazilian team to the Copa America Confederations Cup. He said, I had to keep going up and up and up, and that took a long time. Mm. And he said, uh, if he's ever having a bit of banter with his mates, mm. um, he often says, uh, guys, do you know how much the World Cup weighs? I do. <laughs> 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 I bet he doesn't. No, I, bet, I bet he knows how, what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, hope he do, I hope that does actually happen. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's also nice to see that to, to these sort of players, the World Cup is still the absolute pinnacle, you know. Yeah. There's a bit of talk of the Champions League is much more important, but it's yeah, not really. The World Cup is the one, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. But uh, for my money, the, uh, the best thing he's ever won was the uh, Golden Foot Award. Oh, yeah. Remember the Golden Foot? We talked about it. Yeah. Get your uh, feet moulded and you're on the promenade in Monaco. He's Monte in there, Carlo. is he? He's in there. And if he's in there, he's in the Dean Wendell's Hall of Fame. Welcome. Come on, Roberto Carlos. I liked how the Fenerbahce fan said, uh, I love you, Carlos. I said, we love you, Carlos. I <laughs> love you, Carlos. <laughs> they were singing individually as well. Yeah, 